Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 21 of my C-Sharp video tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, we're really going to focus in on toolbars, but we're also going to be covering toolbar trays, combo boxes, a lot more on icons. I'm going to explain exactly how I used them in part 20 because that caused a little bit of confusion and a whole bunch more. As always, all of the code as well as a transcript to this video is available in the description underneath this video, and I have a lot to do, so let's do it. get into it. Okay, so I'm using the exact code from part 20 here, and I'm just going to be adding to it. So you need that code, so go to part 20 and download that code. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're in here where we created the menu. You can see here are all the different menu items, and we're gonna be adding a menu toolbar. And you can see right here is our dock panel, and here is our menu. And if we follow this down, you're going to see that we are going to be putting it right after the menu closes. So to create a toolbar, you're going to have to create a toolbar tray like that. And then I'm gonna call dock panel once again, and dock, and then this once again is going to be equal to top. So it's gonna fit right in there, and then we're going to put the toolbar inside of that area. So what we're gonna do next is just come in and go toolbar, and I don't need to set any attributes for this guy. And then I'm just gonna start throwing in my buttons. So I'm gonna say button, and I'm going to give this the name of toolbar open. And then if you wanna throw in a tool tip, you can do that. And that means if they put their mouse over it, it's going to allow them to see exactly what it does. And if I wanna tie into an action here, what I can do is just go click and menu open and click, which is exactly what I used previously whenever I used just the regular menu system like we have up here. Now, if you wanna put an icon inside of there, which more than likely you do, what you're gonna do is go image and source is going to be equal to, and then you're going to point at, in my situation, I created a folder called resources, and here are all of the different guys I have inside of here. These are gonna be used as icons, and you can see the open icon right there. And where I got that is here. Here is the link. I talked about this previously, but I'm actually going to show you what it looks like. So we're, what you're gonna do is just go to that page, click on download, and then I'm using the 2013. You can try 2015, you can do whatever you want. So you're gonna download those zip files, and then you're going to be presented with a folder. And there's a whole bunch of different things inside of here. So let's say that I wanted to get a cut, um, an image that's gonna represent cut. Well, I can go into actions and bitmap. And then inside of here, I just scroll down and I look for cut. So where is cut? Let's try it a little bit further. And there it is. So there's a couple different icons I can use for cutting. Now what I did was I just went and right clicked on it and I went copy right like this, and then we can minimize that. And then I went over into resources and right clicked on it and went paste, right like that, okay? And then I changed the name to cut. So that's all I did. So let's delete that out of there because I don't need it. And it's gonna say yes, and it's gone. Okay, so that's exactly how I got those. Now how you reference that folder, just like we did previously, is we're going to say resources forward slash open dot bitmap because that's what it's called and then of course we are going to close that guy off now we're going to be doing this same thing for all of the other different options so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this just come down here and paste this in and oh by the way you can see that the icon is right there so there it is and it will work okay so let's just paste in another one let's say we want the next one to be toolbar save and we'll set, change the tooltip to save file. And then this one's probably called save click, menu save click. It's exactly what we used previously. And then the resource we're gonna use as an icon is going to be save bitmap. And you can see save bitmap. There it is right there and you saw what it looked like. Okay, so let's just go add more of these guys. Up next, we are going to cover how to cut. So we're going to come in and go cut. And we're gonna get rid of the tool tip because it's kind of, you know, if you don't know what cut and copy and paste mean, you know, that's a problem. So for the click event in this situation, we are going to get rid of it all together. So let's just get rid of that. And then what we're gonna do is instead go commands and equal to application commands 
and cut. So you're going to be doing a different thing here for that. And here we will use our cut bitmap. And let's just copy this and we're gonna do the same. You can see there it is, it's showing up and I'll demonstrate what it does here in a moment. Paste that inside of there. We're also going to have the ability to copy. So we can throw copy in there and then we'll just change this to copy and then resources and this will be copy as well. And after I do that, you can see that copy's up there. All right, and then we'll do another one for paste. So we'll go and get this and paste and change this from cut to paste and then change this to paste as well. So there that is. And you can see all of the icons that we just added. So pretty simple to do. Another thing that is quite useful, sometimes you might want to separate the different icons you have on your toolbar. So what we're gonna do is just go separate her like that and then close that off. And there you have a separation between all of these commands over here. And what I'm gonna do next is throw a combo box inside of there. So you can put anything you want inside of your toolbar. Any of the things you can use anywhere else, you can use in a toolbar. So let's say I wanted to do a label inside of here, and I wanted it to have the name of font size. I can do it, and there it is, right there, font size. Okay, so after that, what I wanna do is put a combo box inside of it that's going to allow the user to select the font size that they want to use, and then I'll have it update in the code. So we're gonna go name like that, and what we'll be updating is font size right down here. So we have that set for 12. So my combo box is going to have the name of, what should we have it? Call it combo font size. Sounds like a good name. And then what you're gonna have to do to get the changes with your combo box is you're gonna have a selection changed is gonna be one of the guys you are going to be calling. And we can come over here and just double click on this and have that automatically be created for us except that is going to complain. So what we're gonna do is just highlight that, change that to an uppercase C, jump over into here and change this to an uppercase C. So there we are, jump back into the XAML code. And also we're going to have to all, uh, be able to collect whenever the drop down menu is closed. So they're gonna click to open the drop down menu and then click to make a selection and then it's gonna close. So we wanna catch that event as well. So I'm gonna go down, drop down, closed. And in that situation, I'm going to, you can also just type in whatever you want here. I'm just gonna go like this though. So I'm gonna double click on that and I'm gonna change this to combo font size, drop down, closed. And then we'll close this off right here like that. And then we will put all of our information inside of there. Let's jump over into the CSS code though, make the change here, cause we made that uppercase. So let's save that, jump back over into XAML. And then I'm going to put all of my drop down or my combo box options. So I'm gonna go combo box item and I'm gonna put 10 inside of there and then I'll just throw a couple more inside of there. So we'll go, let's try like four. So we'll say 10 and 12 and 14 and 16 are going to be all of the different options. You can also have one of them set by default. So since I have down below, I have font size set to 12. Well, I can come in here and set that as the one that's selected by saying is selected and then marking that as true. So that'll be automatically selected in the combo box and you're gonna see it's highlighted automatically by default. And then the toolbar and the toolbar tray are going to be closed and that's it. That's all we need to do. So now let's jump over into the CSS code and let's make the combo box work and see what else we can do here. All right, so here is our code. And what we're gonna wanna do here is we're gonna want to create a variable inside of here that's gonna be used to track if the font size combo box is going to be closed. So I'm gonna say private boolean combo um, font size closed. And by default, it's gonna be set to true. So let's leave it that way because it wouldn't make sense for it to always be open. And then inside of this guy, I wanna change the font size of the text box after the combo is closed. But what I wanna do is I wanna first go down here and create another function that's going to handle changing the font size in the text box whenever it's selected. So I'm gonna call this change text box font size. 
and of course it's always good to put comments inside of there so that makes sense so basically what this is going to do is i'm going to go and what i need to do is convert the combo font size data into a string so whenever i retrieve it i'm going to go font size well, let's just make that all lowercase just for the heck of it all right and what i'm going to do is i'm going to say combo font size selected item and then i'm going to convert that to string now what that's going to do is it is going to give you sort of a string that's going to be a little bit junky and what we really want is just one little small part of the string which is going to be the actual font size so what we are going to do is actually output this so that we can see exactly what type of data is being sent in so i'm going to put this as font size like this and then inside of here i'll put font size that's returned and i know that i'm going to need to correct that but for now this is going to be perfectly fine just so that we can debug this okay so that's all that's going to do for the moment so back up into the combo box or the situation which we need to handle whenever a selection is changed in our combo box so what i'm going to say is if combo font size or let's change that again so this will be combo font size closed so let's throw that in there instead if that comes back as true then i'm going to call or go and call change tb font size and have that guy execute for us which is this guy down here change Oh, TP font size okay and then after we do that I'm going to say that the combo font size is going to be closed so I need to set that to true because we know that once a selection is made the combo box is most definitely going to close on its own so that's all we need to do for that then for this one what we're going to do is verify that the combo is closed and call for the font size to be changed so for this, I need to go combo box and combo, let's just call it combo box. And then you go sender, because the combo box is going to call for this to execute. Combo box. And then I'm going to say combo font size closed is going to be equal to not combo box is drop down open. And then I'll call for the font size to actually change. Or in this situation, it's just going to display some information on our screen. Actually, it makes more sense for this to be TB. So let's change that, and then let's also change that. So that's going to execute that. So for now, what we're going to do is just display the current font size whenever this is executed, or whenever it's changed. Let's run it and see if I didn't make any little errors somewhere. And you can see right here, it comes back as system windows controls combo box item for the font size, not something we want, and we will fix that. But if we come up here and here is the font size, you can see 12 selected by default, we can change it to 10. And here you can see the 10 pops up. So what we wanna do is we just wanna get those last two digits off of there and use those. And you can see that popped up as well. And you could also see that if we come in here, some random text, and we go and well the font size is going to change but let's go like this and let's do cut like that you can see that works you can see that the paste is going to work and you're also going to see that the copy is going to work we go like this and paste and you can also see here that it's going to open up the open file dialog right there and this is going to open up the save file dialog box right there and then we can close this and now we know what we need to get out of this guy right here so that we will be able to change our font size so what we just need are the last two digits so how we can get that is i'm just going to say font size is equal to font size and i'm going to call substring on this don't know if you remember substring or not covered this quite some time ago and then i want to go font size length minus two and that is going to give me the last two digits, which is going to be, actually this is substring, see, I make mistakes also. It's going to give us the last two digits, which is going to be the font size that was selected in the combo box. Well, now what I'm gonna do is just use switch and font size, and then depending upon what they selected, that is going to give me different answers. So let's go like this, 
And of course, I can say case. And if the value is equal to 10, well, in that situation, I want to change the text box, which is called text box doc over in the XAML code. And size is equal to 10, right like this. And then I can come in and say break. And I'm going to need one of those for all of the other ones. Let me go over here, though, and show you where I defined the name for the text box. See, text box doc right there. Bounce back over, come down here, and let's change this to 12. And then we'll change this to 12. And then we're going to have to do that for all of the other different options. So we'll also do it for 14, and we'll also do it for 16. So there's 14, and there is 16. And that's all we need to do. And let's run it and test that it works. We don't have that message box opening up. Nope, that's a good thing. And then we can come in and say something like some random text like that. And if we change the font size to 10, you can see it shrunk. 16, you can see it's going to enlarge. 16, whoops, made a little mistake here. I forgot to change these. Okay, so 10, 12, 14, and 16. There that is, save it, and let's run it again. Do, 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 do. And there it is. And now we can come in again and test it out. Some random text. And we can come in like this, change it to 10, it shrinks, change it to 16, it gets large, change it to 14, it shrinks again. All right, so there you go, guys. That is a whole bunch of different things we can do with toolbars, and I hope you guys found that useful. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.